My next patron question is from Joshua, who wanted to know what the deal is with one of the major Hollywood studios. Over the last several years, Warner Brothers has gone through quite a few changes in ownership and parent company. Kinney, Time Inc., AOL, AT&T, and now Discovery Inc. A couple of these cases lasted a number of years and seemed to serve them well, others not so much. Do you think Warner Brothers will ever have a parent company that they'll settle with permanently? Warner Brothers has definitely had a rocky period these past several years, which is a shame considering it's one of the most storied film studios and next to Disney the most recognizable. As Joshua mentioned, they've gone through several owners and mergers, and I don't entirely understand why these companies keep wanting to divest or let WB go. Warner Brothers has such a valuable portfolio of assets, with not just the main studio, but also their various television networks and incredible library, mostly accumulated from their purchase of Turner Entertainment. If I was a big corporation and had Warner Brothers under my belt, I would always keep them around. Meanwhile, I remember being baffled when Time Warner was sold to AT&T. Time Warner seemed to be doing well on their own without having to be gobbled up by a telecommunications company. It would be akin to Disney being bought by Verizon. Although Comcast did offer to buy Disney in 2004, but Michael Eisner and the board thankfully turned them down and Comcast backed off. Of course, a merger that did not work out for them was with America Online. Even when the merger was announced, analysts questioned this as internet companies were not doing that great at the time. A few years later, LL's importance within the company decreased and they dropped it from the name. I admit I always get amused when I watch the studio's movies released during that period and see an LL Time Warner company under the logo. It really timestamps when that infamous merger happened. Curiously, in 2014, Rupert Murdoch became interested in buying Time Warner, which is odd considering he would sell 20th Century Fox to Disney a few years later. Had he bought the company, would Warner Brothers become a subsidiary of 20th Century Fox, like how 20th Century is currently a subsidiary of Walt Disney Studios? One thing that would have certainly happened had the deal gone through is CNN having to be sold to someone else, as antitrust laws would have prevented News Corp from owning both CNN and Fox News. I'm happy that deal never happened, though. Right now, we are witnessing the result of the Warner Brothers Discovery merger, which has led to one baffling decision after another. I'm going to be honest here and say I'm not a fan of David Zlazlov. Every choice he has made in running the company has signaled to me that he is someone with no genuine interest in art. He is just purely a numbers person, and I think if someone is appointed the head of an entertainment company, they should be someone who understands finances and the importance of creativity in creating the films and shows and other media people watch and enjoy. The decision to stuff Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Haunt to a vault never to be seen by anyone and get rewarded with a tax write-up for it is so slimy to me. And then removing WB owned programming from HBO Max, also for tax reasons, has started a terrible precedence with Disney and Paramount following suit with their own streaming services. Yes, almost every piece of entertainment is created to make money, but those were still films and shows artists and creators work really hard putting together and should be made easily accessible to people, whether on a streaming service or a physical disc or other release methods. He also decided to remove HBO from the name of the company's streaming service and just leave it as Max, which is odd to me since HBO is such a recognizable brand. When I see the word Max, I think of Goofy's son. Last I checked, that's a Disney character. The only thing Zlazov has done that I feel could be a good idea is appointing James Gunn and Peter Safran as the heads of DC Studios. That has the potential to lead to promising results as they attempt to relaunch that cinematic universe. However, if it works out, it's because James Gunn is someone who understands filmmaking and storytelling, and I'll give credit to him, not David Zlazlov. Considering Zlazlov's clear lack of love for Warner Brothers and its importance as a film studio, I do see Warner Brothers emerging from Discovery in the future. Or Zlazlov's increasingly unpopular decisions will lead to him receiving a golden parachute and sent on his way. Who would I get to replace him? Honestly, I would probably pick the current heads of the Warner Brothers film group, Pamela Abdi and Michael DeLuca. Unlike Zlazlov, they have extensive film experience and are known for fostering good relationships with filmmakers. Abdi got her start as Danny DeVito's assistant at his production company and later had executive roles at Paramount and New Regency. Michael DeLuca spent several years at New Line in the 90s overseeing several hit films at the studio and even wrote the sixth Nightmare on Elm Street movie and John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness. He then ran DreamWorks Pictures for a while and later became an independent producer, producing films like The Social Network and Moneyball. Both then worked together at MGM before being hired to their current position at Warner Brothers. Those are the kinds of people I trust with a legendary movie studio. I really hope WB finds a permanent home one day with people running the entire place who actually care about the various brands under it. Oh, and giving writers, actors, and other employees a fair wage and proper compensation. That would be nice, too. Thank you for your question, Joshua.